in our study on Sunday nights on prophecy. And, and I tell you, when you study prophecy and you see what all is happening, you quickly realize we're not just living in the last days. We're in the last of the last days. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe Jesus is soon to come. And I've said it many times during this whole COVID-19 thing and people being home and and uh, and quarantined. Uh, I believe with all my heart, God's given us as as individuals, as a country, as a nation, as a world, He's given us a very long altar call. Mm -hmm. I believe that, mm -hmm. and it's up to us what we choose to do with it. You know, it's up to us whether we make that commitment or not. It's up to us whether we pray or not, whether we read our Bible or not. I mean, it's up to us, and uh, and I hope. Uh, that through all this and stuff that you've been able to have a closer walk uh, that you've been able to, to maybe uh, get back into that prayer life that you once had or maybe make it stronger or you're reading or whatever the case may be but listen we're I believe we're soon to go home I, I do I believe that and what an exciting day that's going to be we're not going to have any prayer list up there because there's not going to be any sickness up there there's not going to be any death up there I'm excited for that there's going to be no child that's sick that we're having to pray for. There's going to be no missing a loved one, uh, praying for someone that's passed on, passed on because we're all going to be together. I'm thankful for that. And listen, I've got a lot of uh, family and uh, people that, that's went on before me. Yeah. I'm excited to see my grandmas and grandpas and, and others that's went on before me. And I know you are too. You're excited to see some that's went on to the other side. Yeah. And I'm thankful for those promises uh, that we have. And this morning, if you would open your Bible up to 1 Samuel chapter number 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30 this morning. And while you're turning there, I, I did uh, realize I forgot to uh, make one announcement there. Do keep in mind that uh, the last uh, Sunday of this month, uh, the morning service, uh, we'll be having a singing service. Uh, we'll be having uh, the Ellis family with us. That's Dora's brother, Virginia's son, Brian Ellis, and his wife, Michelle. Uh, they'll be with us that morning uh, singing. And I told him just have at it. If he wants to sing the whole time, sing. If he wants to sing and preach, do that as well. Whatever the Lord leads him to do and lays on his heart. And they're scheduled to be with us. Uh, I believe that's the 28th, um, if I remember correctly. That's the last Sunday in June. And that morning service, we'll be having a, a singing service. And I'm excited about that so so make sure you're uh, you're inviting people to that i love to see us have a have a packed out house that morning and uh, and just come in here and, and worship the lord and and uh and uh, have a have a singing service a little, something a little different uh for us that morning i'm excited about that but in first samuel chapter number 30 we're going to start in verse number one and we're going to go through this story and, and and see what the lord has for us and i hope that it will be a help and encouragement uh, to you. I, I, I believe that this is fitting in uh, today's uh, uh, world, in today's time uh, that we're facing. But in verse number 1 of chapter 30, 1 Samuel, it says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziglag and, uh, and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great nor or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no, no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, and, and we see here... Yeah, I want to stop there for a moment. We see here that their, that their families have been taken from them. The wives, the children, the city had been burned. And if I could entitle it this morning, uh, the sermon, I would simply say, What has been taken from you? What has been taken from you? In this story, a lot of times you read this story, the Amalekites and stuff, they are a type of the devil uh, in this chapter. Uh, they can be a comparison to the devil. And, you know, the devil, he's out to seek and, and to kill and destroy and, and take all that he can. And listen, for the Christian, what's the one biggest thing I believe with all my heart that he tries to take? He tries to take our joy. Yes. He tries to take our joy away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and a lot of times and stuff, I, I got to think throughout this whole quarantine, people being uh, stuck in their homes, not being able to interact with people physically, getting out of their homes and things like that. You know, it's real easy to get down. Yes. Yeah. It's real easy to lose your joy, real easy to lose your hope, real easy to lose your faith. 
And you know, that's what the devil wants. He wants to attack that. He wants to remove that, to take that away from us. Because listen, if we get down and out and we don't have faith and we don't have joy, then we're not going to be able to go out there and shine our light as bright as we ought to. He's going to try to take things from us. And I, and I believe, you know, uh, science proves it and stuff. So it, it's not good for people to be trapped in their home for a long period of time. And, and one word you don't ever hear in, in church because people look at you bad is, is a word called depression. That's a real thing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times in our churches and stuff, uh, how, how dare you say that word? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you, one of the greatest preachers of all time, the prince of preachers, Charles Spurgeon, he dealt with depression greatly. But yet people know him to be the prince of preachers, one of the greatest preachers of all time. He, he would hardly get out of bed Monday through Saturday, but he would get up on Sunday morning and preach to thousands of people. I mean, but yeah, we, we say that word in church and stuff, and people look at you like, oh my goodness, you ain't even saved. You're depressed. I mean, that's the kind of world we live in. But listen, that is a real thing. The devil, he, he, he will oppress us. He will put us down. He will, he will press on us. He will take things from us. And sometimes he'll take things from you that you don't even realize. He'll, 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 he'll slide. He'll move in. And he'll, he'll take something away from you. And you don't even realize it's gone until how much lo uh, longer down the road. But we see David here. It says that they all came in. Uh, they were in Ziglag here. They came in and they, they burned it. They, they took their wives. They took their children. They did this. They, they took everything away from them. <laughs> and listen, family is everything. I love my family. Mm -hmm. And you should love your family. And all of us as Christians, you know who, are, who we should minister to first? <laughs> our family. That should be number one. Is our families. But families are so easily torn apart nowadays. Yeah. It's really sad the world in which we live in. I mean, I've been watching all this stuff, um, you know, on the news this past week, trying to keep up with all the things going on. And it, it breaks my heart for what's taking place in our country today. The values that we once had are gone. I mean, I had to literally turn the sound off of my phone while watching the protest because of the language. I mean, it's horrible. It's awful. And, and, and people, they, they want to destroy things. They want to cause pain to others. Well, what is that? Listen, the devil's having a heyday. Right he's having a heyday right now. Listen, he, he's taking things from us as individuals. He's taking things from us as a church. He's taking things from us as a country. He's taking things from us as a world. Why? He does not want us uh, to fulfill the Great Commission. He does not want our light to shine. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that song that said, don't hide under a bushel. No, right? Yeah. Uh, listen, I, those are cute songs, but those, those songs hold truth. Mm -hmm. Those are so true. And I'm thankful for it. But we see, uh, go to verse number six real quick. It says, and David, notice this, was greatly distressed. I don't know about you, but we live in a distressed society today. We live in a very distressed society. And, and we see the distress taking place here from verses 1 through 6. It says, And David was greatly uh, distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Because why? The soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his, his sons and for his daughters. Notice that all these men and stuff that, that, that honored David, that looked up to David, that loved David and stuff, now that everything's gone, now that everything's been taken away, well, they got to have a scapegoat, right? They gotta have a scapegoat. They gotta blame somebody uh, for what's happened. So they all start turning on David. Yeah. They all turn on David. They want to point the finger at David, and they want to uh, they want to blame him, and they talk of stoning him of, of, uh, that's to kill David. Okay, they, they wanted to literally kill him at this point. But I love this part. And if you write in your Bible, if you underline, highlight, whatever, I want you to to highlight or underline this next part in verse number six. I love it. But David. Encouraged himself in his friends? No. no. In his family? No. no. In his neighbor? No. In the Lord. Yes. In the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Yes. When he had nobody else to go to, he still had the Lord. Yes. When you have no one else to go to, Go to the Lord. Yes. When you can't talk to your family, when you can't go to your family, when you can't go to a loved one, a friend, a, 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 a church member, a neighbor, whoever, go to the Lord. 
David had nothing here. He had nobody. Everything had been taken away. And I'm telling you, could you imagine? Think for a minute. Everything just being taken away from him. I don't know how much more lower you could get, how much more depressed you could get by something like that happening. But your family being gone. Your, your home being burned up. Everything's gone. But yet he found a way to encourage himself in the Lord. Listen, I encourage you today. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in his promises. Yeah, yeah. Listen, this Bible that we hold, it is full of promises. Mm -hmm. I've heard different numbers on it and things, and I don't know the exact number because I've heard so many different ones, and I've not went through the count on myself and, and things, but I've heard that there's over 4,000 promises in the Word of God. And listen, the good thing about that, if, if God promises you something, it's going you can to take it to the bank. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. I'm thankful for that this morning, but it says David encouraged himself in the Lord. That word encouraged himself there, it carries the idea to fasten upon, to be strong, courageous, strengthen, to cure, to help, and to repair. I thought, wow, boy, if we would just do that, if we would encourage ourselves encourage ourselves in the Lord, what would that do? We'd fasten upon him. We'd hang on to him. We'd get close to him. We'd be strong and courageous. I love the verse Joshua 1, 9, be strong in the Lord. I love that courageous it talks about. It, it says to, to give strength, to give cure, to help and to repair. Listen, there's never been a time like this in American history that we're going through right now. We need a lot, we need a lot of repairing. We need a lot of repairing. You know how we uh, can, can give a lot of that to happen? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Seek His will. Pray it to Him. Cry out to Him. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Again, highlight that, underline that in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible so you can always go back to it. And on your worst days, when you when you feel that you have nobody, when you feel that you have nothing, remember you've got the Lord. And you can encourage yourself in Him. Now listen, I know that that's a lot easier said than done. I guarantee you it was a lot easier said than done for, for David. He, it wasn't that easy to do. He, he fought emotions just like we do. We forget that a lot of times when we read the Bible. We, we read about all these great characters, these, these men of God, these women and stuff in the Bible. But listen, they were just like you and I. We, we forget that a lot of times because I believe we live in such a, a, a I'll say it this way, a fantasy world now where we have movies and TV and video games and YouTube. I mean, all this stuff. And we, and we kind of, we don't live in a, in a real world, I guess you could say. And when we read the Bible, I'm afraid a lot of times we say, well, those are, those are our characters, you know. And, 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 and I know we use that word loosely sometimes, but these were real people, just like us sitting here today. And if you're saved, guess what? You're going to see them again one day. Amen. I can't wait to sit down and have some conversations with these people. I mean, think about it. Can you, can you imagine sitting down beside Noah and saying, what was it like? Having all those animals on that boat. <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, think about that. I mean, that is a reality, folks. Yeah. Sit down beside David and say, David, what was it like throwing that, that stone at that giant? Yeah. Knocking him over. Boy, we need to start knocking some giants down in our, in our land, don't we? Yeah. Listen, that's a reality. These are real people. They had emotions just like you and I. They had thoughts just like you and I. They felt things just like you and I. But David, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He went through great distress here, but he, he, went, he, he knew to encourage himself in the Lord. And, and again, people were wanting to kill him. They, wanted to, they, they were turning on him. And isn't that how it is in today's world? As soon as something goes wrong, people will instantly turn on him. Listen, your true friends will show up during hard times. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's just the fact that when, when you go through something, when you go through hard times, that's when you see who your true friends are because they will stick with you. I've learned that lesson the hard way a lot of times. But listen, it's true. You think someone's there and they're not. We've all been there. We've all lost friends. We've all, uh, we've all done that and, and people turn on you. And listen, many times, again, people don't want to, uh, to, to, to take responsibility for anything and they look for a scapegoat and say, well, it's your fault. You know, it, it, it's your fault that happened. Uh, it, it's all him. Uh, when when he did this, and it all it all blew up. You know, and everybody's looking for a scapegoat. Well, that's exactly what they were doing during this time as well. 
they were looking to, to David to, to stone him, to kill him and stuff. But, you know, I love Ephesians six twelve. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, a w a wickedness in high places. It's not meant for us to wrestle against one another, flesh and blood. Listen, it is all of the devil. It is all of the devil and, 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 and his angels, his, the, those demons and stuff. That's what we're fighting against. We're fighting a, 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 a war against an invisible enemy. You know, and, and even uh, President Trump said that one time with COVID-19. He said we're fighting a war against something we can't see. And I got to thinking about that. I thought, man, that is so true spiritually. Because that's what we do as Christians every single day we wake up. We're fighting an enemy we can't see. Now that enemy that we can't see will use other things and use other people and things like that to, to make it hard on you or to make you doubt or, or to discourage you, depress you, give you a hard time, whatever the case may be. But, but listen, we're fighting an invisible enemy. And listen, don't underestimate the devil. He's powerful. But the good thing is he's only as powerful as God allows him to be. That's what I like. I like reminding him of that a lot of times. I'm like, well, you, you know, you're powerful. You've got a lot of power, but not, not any more than God lets you have. You know, and remind him of that. When he starts reminding you of your past, remind him of his future. Remind him of where he's going and what's going to happen to him. Because listen, when I believe this thing's coming to a head. I believe it's coming close. When the Lord comes back and stuff, listen, there's going to be a lot of things happening. We've been discussing that and talking about that. But listen, he's not coming as a baby the next time. He's coming as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I'm thankful for that. I'm excited for that. You should be excited for that too. I said it last Sunday night. I believe it was. Never in history have we seen so much prophetic events take place in the world as we're seeing right now. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, this is an exciting time for a Christian to live. Is it a hard time? Absolutely. But it's an exciting time, prophetically speaking, for the Christian to live. Because I believe he's soon to come. I believe with all my heart in my lifetime, I'm going to see the coming of the Lord. I preach that way. I talk that way. You know that. I, I believe that. Paul said the same thing 2,000 years ago. I want to be like that. Listen, some people be like, we preached that 2,000 years ago. Well, that just means we're 2,000 years closer. Yeah. I'm not setting a date on when it's going to happen. I told you to stay away from those cats. Don't listen to that mess because nobody knows when it's happening. But listen, I believe it's close. I believe it's close. That's why it's so important to make your calling and election sure. Make sure you know where you're going to spend eternity. If you were to die right now, where are you going to go? That is a reality, folks. What if everything was taken away just like that, like it was for David here? What are you going to do? Are you going to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord because you're his, his, his child? Because, listen, if you're not, you can't do that. You don't have that relationship. You're not his. Listen, it's important to know whether you're not, whether uh, you know uh, that you're a child of God or not. That's so important. Yeah. You either are or you're not. It's not a maybe. The Bible plainly puts it for ways for us to know that we're saved. Listen, we're, we're meant, listen, we as Christians, we're meant to live in victory. He doesn't want us to live in bondage. He wants us to know that we're saved. He wants us to know that we have that freedom. Not a freedom to sin. I'll put that in there. Not a freedom to sin like some people think. Oh, well, I'll go to church this morning, I'll get saved, and then I'm going to go do what I want to tomorrow. No, it doesn't work that way. But but listen, uh, it, uh, he wants us to know without a shadow of a doubt where we're going to spend eternity. We, we're supposed to have a joyful life. What kind of joy can you have if you're always constantly wondering where you're going to spend eternity? Listen, settle it today. Make sure you know where you're going. Notice what happened here. After, after David encouraged himself in the Lord, verse number seven, it said, And David said, uh, David said to Amathur the, the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Amathur brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord. Notice, he went to the Lord. He said, saying, Shall I pursue? Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover some, recover all. That's a promise given to David from God, that he's going to recover all. Remember what I said about God's promises. They'll come true. 
You can cash them. To, you can take them to the bank and cash them. They're real. They're going to happen. Uh, he said you're going to. He said pursue them. You're going to overtake them, and you're going to recover all. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. I like that. I love. I love David's thought here. He didn't immediately just jump to conclusion and go straight after. I don't know about you, but that'd be hard not to do. If that had been me and, my, and everything had been burnt down and my family taken away, it had been hard for me not to get on my horse or my camel or whatever and go after them immediately. Why? Because of the anger within us. You know, that flesh that we fight every single day. Listen, public enemy number one for me is me. I look in the mirror every morning, that's my number one enemy. I fight this flesh just like you do. And, and we all go through that. We all fight things. And, 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 and temptations and trials and struggles and things. But David slowed down and he inquired of the Lord. He asked the Lord questions. He said, shall I even pursue after them? Should I even go after this truth? And I believe if God said, no, don't do it, I believe he would have not done it. I, I believe he would have stayed right where he was and he wouldn't have pursued. I, I believe that. Now, we don't, you know, we don't know that because it didn't happen that way. God told him to pursue after him, and I'm thankful that he did. But, but David asked, he said, shall I pursue after him? And not only shall I pursue after him, will I be able to overtake him? And, and, and God answered. I'm glad that we got a God we can go to and ask him questions, and he'll answer. I'm thankful that he not just hears our prayer, he answers our prayer. And sometimes that answer is not always yes. But listen, he knows he knows uh, far greater things than I do. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week, what's going to happen next year. He, he knows. I don't. I'm thankful that he hears and answers our prayers. He heard David. He answered David. He said, pursue him. So look at verse number 9. What happened? So David went. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if Christians just so easily followed the Lord? When God says go, we just get up and go. I, I mean, Lord have mercy. Sometimes you have to... Uh, you can uh, what's that saying? You lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. Yeah, you know, that happens a lot of times in the in the church family, don't it? In the in the Christian community. Listen, it's so important when God says go that we go. The Bible tells us plainly we're not here to please people. We're here to play, please God, to honor God, to serve God, to please Him. That's what's most important. We got too many people pleasers today. We got too many people pleasers within the church. We got too many people pleasers within the communities. We got too many people pleasers behind the pulpits. Yeah. I believe that. They want to tell you what you want to hear. I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God says. If you don't like it, then you're just going to take it up with God. I mean, because I'm just going to tell you what the, what the Bible says. I'm not going to preach my opinions to you and, 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 and say that this is right or wrong. Listen, that's not up to me. And so God's Word is authority. And I'm thankful for that. But he told David, he said, he said, pursue after him. You're going to overtake him. And you're going to cover all. So David went and he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook of Besor where those that were left behind stayed. And notice verse number 10, but David pursued. David kept going. He didn't stop. And listen, looking at it from a from a fleshly point of view, if I can say it that way, he had ever ever right to just stop and give up. He just lost it all. But it says that he went, and then the next verse says, but David pursued. He kept going. He didn't stop with the others. He didn't quit. He didn't hide behind. He kept going because, listen, God promised him something. If you're saved this morning, if you're a child of God, we have a promise of a heavenly home one day. Guess what we need to do? We need to keep going. We need to keep pursuing. Pursuing who? Pursuing the lost. Telling, telling people about Jesus. Standing up for truth. Standing up for what's right. Listen, I never in my life seen a world so, so mixed up as, as today's world. Yeah. Yeah. On what they think's right. What they think's wrong. And really, there's what they think's wrong is what's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's the exact opposite of what it should be. And it just blows my mind. I mean, every day I turn the news on and stuff and I just, I'll be honest with you, I, here lately and stuff, you know, I've just been having to stay off of both social media and, and, and news just to try to stay in the right spirit. Because yeah. I get aggravated. Yeah. I'm like, how do they not know? Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's a blind world. I mean, you living in seeing is what you're, you're blind. Yes. You don't see the truth. And I've said it many times, once you see truth, you can't unsee it. Yes. You know what it is. But listen, never in my life have I seen such an immoral society. We need to keep pursuing, folks. 
Keep pursuing light. Keep pursuing God. Keep pursuing truth. Keep pursuing the laws telling them that, hey, if you don't repent, you don't get saved, you're going to hell. You know, in a loving, right way. And we, we need to do that. We need to let our light shine. Yes, it's easy to get down. Yes, it's easy to get discouraged. Yes, it's easy to get down and depressed. All that, listen, because look at what mess we're living in. Yeah. It's easy for that to happen. But listen, it's not meant for us to live that way as Christians. He wants us to have a joyful life. Yeah. He wants to, now, I'm not up here preaching prosperity and saying you're going to go home today and have a brand new car waiting in your driveway. I'm not doing stuff like that. I want you to understand. Listen, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Yes. I've talked about that before. We, a few weeks ago, I believe it was, maybe even on one of the Facebook lives. I don't, I don't remember. But recently, we talked about that, about joy versus happiness and how they're not the same, how they are different. And what God does for us and in our hearts and implants in us, that's, that's joy yes. and stuff. And he wants us to live that kind of lifestyle, a joyful lifestyle. But we see that David, he, he first went to the Lord. He prayed. And then he also, he, by doing that, he showed patience. Yes. And, you know, that's a hard thing to do. You know, the old saying, never pray for patience. I've heard that my whole life. People say, "Don't what are you do? Don't pray for patience." You know, I've heard that my whole life and and, yes. uh, and stuff and and uh, you know that's that's a hard thing to deal with being patient. Yes. Especially in today's world, I, I say it all the time. We live in a microwave society. Dang, it's done. You're ready. I mean, you know, you can throw whatever in the microwave. Thirty seconds later, eat it. Orders up on Amazon. You have it on your front porch the next day. I mean, we're a quick society where we want it now. I mean, we have no patience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, and stuff, and I'm guilty of that too. I mean, we're all in that society. I mean, we have our cell phones; we can get anything we want, or, uh, access anything we want from it, and we're we're a spoiled society. Yeah. So patience is something that is far and few between anymore. Yes. Um, but uh, but David showed great patience here. He prayed to God. He showed patience <laughs> to God. But then he 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 did as God said. Uh, God gave him a promise, and guess what? He did. He hung on to that promise. He went and he pursued. We see that verse number 9, he went. Verse number 10, he pursued. And, and it said he pursued and, and he imported men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint. That means they were dead tired that they could not go on over the brook of Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat. And they made him drink water. Now this is a, su such an interesting uh, part of the story here. They're out there pursuing after these men. Here they come across an Egyptian slave out in the middle of nowhere, basically. Notice what happens here, and it says, And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins, and when he had eaten, his spirit uh, came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. Now, I find that interesting, you know, the number three. I, I like the three days and three nights. Why? Because that all points to Jesus and his resurrection. Many times in the Word of God, you'll see many things happen in three days and three nights. You know, just like this, just like with Jonah, just like with the resurrection. It's a common theme, and that's not by accident, folks. That's because of a divine God uh, that, that put that in there plainly. And remember, everything in the Word of God has meaning behind it. Every number has a meaning. We've done that study before. Everything has something behind it, and nothing is by mistake. It says, three days and three nights. And David said unto him, to whom belongest thou? He realized he was an Egyptian slave. And, of course, if you're a slave, you belong to somebody. Yes. You belong to somebody, and you know that's that's the world today. It, for the for the sinner that's lost at night and going to hell, they're a slave. Yes. They're a slave to their sin. They're a slave to the death. They don't have that freedom that we have, that bondage yes. that we have. They, they they don't have that. They don't they don't know that. He he knew that he was a slave, so he thought, well, he's a slave. He belongs to somebody, and he asked him, who do you belong to? And, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of, the, of Egypt, servant to Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. Boy, ain't that something. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how, how God's perfect divine plan yes. comes into place? Mm -hmm. how, how something, uh, 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 here's, a, here's a, a, an Egyptian slave mm -hmm. to the Amalekites, the ones that just burnt down Ziglag and, and took the, the wives and the kids and all that stuff and, and now we got this Egyptian slave to them and, and he fell sick so he was left behind for dead isn't it amazing and, and, and notice what happens here it says we made an invasion upon the south of, of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belonged to, belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziglag with fire he, he told on himself didn't he, he didn't have, he's like listen we burned them 
you know, and, and it says, and David uh, said unto him, canst thou bring me down to the company? Boy, boy we had a, a military strategy right here, didn't we? And he said, he said, well, can you take us there? You know, he's like, I got an inside source here. We were, we were good to him. We fed him. We gave him the drink. He's not going to die now. It says He, he says, can, can thou, uh, canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of of Judah. Notice what the enemy was doing. It says they were drinking, they were eating, drinking, dancing because of all the great spoil. They were relaxed, weren't they? They were happy because of what they had done. You know, isn't that how we're seeing a lot of things today? Uh, evil and stuff. We, we, we see evil take place and, and, and heartache take place and we, we see you know, the, the celebrities and the sports stars and the big people that's behind you know, uh, things going on. Well, they're sitting in their mansions and and eating and drinking and being merry and having no problem in the world it looks like and all that. Listen, that's what that's kind of the same picture here, I guess you could say. Same the same concept uh, would, would be a good way to put that. And and, and I love that this Egyptian uh, slave helped them like this. And you know the the Lord, no doubt in my mind, kept him alive for the sake of his servant David. Amen. I mean, he he kept that Egyptian slave alive to help David. Think, think of think of that for a minute. What kind of God we serve? I, I read one author put it this way. He said, food for thought. And I, and I like this. He said, treat those you meet with respect and dignity, no matter how insignificant they may seem. You never know how God will use them to help you or haunt you, depending on your response to them. I thought, man, that's true. I read that in a book one night, and I said, that's good stuff right there. You know, which the Bible tells you not plainly that we entertain angels unaware. You know, they're amongst us. We don't even know who they are or, or, or when we're doing something or came in contact, whatever. But I would say there's a good chance every one of us in here at some point in time has came in contact with one because of uh, the, the things the Bible alludes to with all that. You, know, you never know who you're entertaining. And, and, I, and I have to agree with the author there that said treat everybody with dignity and respect, no matter how big, no matter how small they may seem, insignificant they may seem, because God could use that individual mm -hmm. to be a blessing or a curse to you, depending on how you treat them. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that to be true. I believe that to be true. Notice verse number 17. It says, And David, what? Smote me. From the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, say 400 young men, which rode upon camels. And what did they do? Fled. They got out of there, didn't they? Notice that David smote them from twilight even unto the evening of the next day. Boy, David, he, he, he was fighting, wasn't he? He was fighting. Hey, you're talking about some, some bloodshed here. But listen, God told him, he said, pursue after him. You're going to overtake him. Listen, I don't know what your enemy is today. I don't know what you're fighting today or what you, what maybe the devil has taken from you. I don't know. But listen, here's what I will tell you. Pursue after. Pray to God. Pray for God's guidance. Pray for God's leadership. Have patience. Pursue after that. And listen, whether you get it here or not, listen, still yet, if you're a child of God, you've got victory in Jesus. Yes. No matter what happens on planet Earth today or tomorrow or next week or next year, even if we're here, no matter what happens, if you're a child of God, we have victory. Yes. I've read the last chapter, yes. and I hope you have too. Yes. It fares out pretty well for us as Christians. But let me tell you, if you're here this morning, you're not saved. You, you can't hang on to these promises I'm talking yes. about. You don't have that victory. The, the sad thing is for someone, think about this for a minute, think, uh, for someone that's not saved, someone that's lost and on their way to hell, this world that they're living in right now is the best it will ever be for them. Yeah. That's a sad thought, folks. Because yeah. no matter what you want to believe about this world, it's an evil, horrible place right now. Yes. Why? Because of sin. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to the garden. What happened with Adam and Eve from the beginning? That's why we had to be saved, because of one man's sin. It was passed on through generation to generation to generation. That's why Jesus had to come and die on Calvary so that we could be saved. It's been that way from the beginning. After you go back to Genesis. I love the book of Genesis. 
the Genesis chapters 1 through 11 laid a foundation for the entire Bible and for, for, uh, for the entire world mm -hmm. from then until now. Mm -hmm. It does. You study that out. I love that. But listen, I don't know what's been taken from you. Maybe nothing. And, and thank God for that if that's the case. But uh, listen, in the time which we uh, live and stuff and, and, you know, being trapped in our homes and the sickness going on and now the riots and the government and, and just different things happening, it's easy to get down. It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get depressed. It's easy to not want to keep going. It's easy to just just to, to lay on the couch and watch TV or lay in your bed. It's easy not to get up and go. But I'm thankful that David, he laid a good example for us here. He spoke to God about it first. He, he encouraged himself in the Lord, even though everything was gone from him. And even though it was all gone, it was all taken away, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Everybody turned on him. He had nobody, folks. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he, he talked to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord for guidance. He showed patience. He prayed, and God gave him a promise, and he went with it. Listen, if God promises you something, hang on to that promise. You let that promise keep encouraging you day after day after day after day. Don't stop. Don't stop praying for that loved one that's lost. Listen, you, do, do you realize, I know I've said this before, but it's so true. Do you realize you may just be one prayer away from someone being saved? We don't know that. We're not God. We can't see that. We don't think that way. We don't know that way. But somebody literally could be one prayer away from being saved. Don't stop. It could be your prayer that causes conviction on that person and they get saved. Listen, prayer is powerful. It's the most powerful tool we have right here on this earth today. I believe that. I love uh, Chronicles. If my people, that's us. Listen, if we just humble ourselves, we seek his face, we seek his will, we pray, we humble ourselves. Man, I tell you what, a lot of things could be fixed in this world. There would be a lot of change in this world. There would be a lot of change in our churches, in our homes, in our government offices, in our schools. I mean, listen, it could make a difference. Prayer is powerful. We see this all started here with David praying to God. He pursued. He kept going. And notice this. I want you to see this. Verse number 18. And David recovered what? All. Verse number 8. Uh, God said what? That he would recover what? All. Ain't that, ain't that awesome how, how God just bookends everything together for you? And just, it's, it's perfectly sitting there. And it says that David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Notice verse number 19. And there was nothing lacking to them. That means they weren't missing anything. Think of that for a minute. They weren't missing a thing. Nothing was lacking to them. And it says neither small nor great. That means there was nothing too big, nothing too small that was missing, that was gone. Everything was brought back to them, replaced. It was all recovered, just like God promised. But I like this. It says... Neither nor sons nor daughters in school nor anything that they had taken to them, David recovered all. We see that happen, we see that statement twice, verse number 18 and verse number 19. Why do you think God put in his word there twice in two verses back to back that David recovered all? I thought of this last night. I thought it, it's to get through our thick skulls that when God promises you something, it's going to happen. Repetition is very important. When the Bible repeats itself, you better pay attention. I've said that many times. Any good school teacher, listen, when you're in school or kids when you're in school, if the teacher repeats something over and over and over again, you better take note. Good chance it's going to be on the test. Same way with, with, our, with our Christian walk. Same way with our life. No different. Well, he repeats it twice. God said it one time to David. He said, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. He told David that in verse number 8. We get to verse number 18. David recovered all. Verse number 19, David recovered all. Once us as the reader, us as Christians, to understand, hey, he got it all back. God's promises are true. They're faithful. You can hang on to them. Listen, what has been taken from you? Uh, I don't know who I, I hope this is a help encouragement to somebody I don't know your hearts I don't know what you're going through I, Listen, I know the whole uh, quarantine thing Has been hard and tough on everybody But what has the, what has the devil taken from you? Listen 
Ask God to restore that. Ask him for his leadership. Ask him for his guidance. Pray to him. Listen, and if you feel like you've got nobody, always remember you got the Lord. Encourage yourself in him. Every head bowed, every eye closed.